What's no longer a fit for you? What's no longer a fit for you? That's what we're talking about in this latest episode of Frazzled. Uh, welcome to Frazzled. If you are new, welcome. If you are a returner, welcome. If you've been here many times before, welcome. Uh, but wherever, whatever uh, has led you here, thank you very much for joining me, for giving up your time to do it. I'm going to be with you for about the next 20 minutes or so, trying to kind of reduce the amount of time that I that I talk to you, talk at you uh, in these podcast episodes. And uh, again, some of you may be familiar with this already, but Frazzled is completely uncut, unedited, unscripted. It's just me with a title. What we're going to talk about, whatever you hear in the background, we've got my fan on this morning. It's like first... First week of September, I'm recording this on Monday the 2nd, you'll be listening to it on Tuesday the 3rd. Uh, it's like 21 degrees in September in the UK, which we've been getting a little bit hotter uh, throughout the years, but this is this is a new one. Uh, so I've got the fan on in the background, you might hear that, you might hear the dog, you might hear the door go, you might hear lots and lots and lots of, of different things, but it's uncut and unedited and unscripted. I've done po- many podcasts before. And I just knew with this one, if I was going to do it, I needed to keep it simple. And I was I was getting myself really, uh, really kind of wound up, actually thinking about the editing, the music, the process, the time it would take to do the guests. That I, did. I was just like, what what would it be if you just let it be easy? And this is this is uh, this is what I've come up with. So it it's, a, you know, as raw and uncut and un, unedited as you get. You'll hear all the stutters. You'll hear the pauses. Uh, what is said in the moment is is what you hear. So thank you very, very much for joining me as is. So what's no longer working for you? I I think we've spoken about this in, in some previous episodes before in that like things can change. Right. And as we as we move I don't know, out of alignment, into alignment, as as we get really clear on who we are and and what we want, but also just as we as we go through life, right, in varying different points of our lives, different things will feel great. And sometimes then those those things don't feel so great. And I wanted to talk to you about today. I want to I'm going to talk to you specifically about the month off that I've just had. But I'm sure you will be able to uh, maybe relate it to other things that that are going on for you and and in your life, right? Things that are potentially leaving you feel, leaving you feeling a lot, uh, a lot more frazzled uh, and a lot less fabulous. So we'll we'll kind of dig into dig into that today. So yeah. So um, what's no longer working for you? I, uh, way back when I started, well, well, I left uh, my in-house career at the the very beginning, very, very start of January 2014. And I was up and running with my consultancy really, really quickly. I was um, working with clients really quickly. I was earning good money really quickly. I was winning awards really quickly. I was doing lots and lots of, of amazing things. Cash flow wasn't easy. I'll, I'll make that really clear, particularly with with a lot of the organisations that I was working with. Um, there were lots of kind of procurement processes that I needed to go through, uh, being signed up as as a you know as a kind of approved supplier, and then I don't think I ever had for at least the first three years that I was in business. If I was working with a company, working with an organisation, I don't think I ever had a an invoice that was paid on time not for the first three years in business which when it's just you is is tough right we have our own bills to pay we need to not just business bills but you know personal bills need to keep the roof over our head food on the table uh, and and all those things and so in addition to that I think I I stopped taking as much time off as I'd had I think when I was in corporate and again this is Right. This is maybe one of those weird things that sometimes we think about for those of you that have have started your own businesses. Right. We we stop working hundreds of hours a week for somebody else and think it's we, we can do it on our own. And then, of course, the first thing that goes is is the monthly monthly pay, unless, of course, you you are 
earning really good money and, and keeping up your salary uh, really quickly. We end up in effect working more hours and longer hours in order to build the business and grow the business and build the connections and the products and the services and really perhaps naively I just thought uh, I'll be delivering all the time it'll be absolutely fine but then there's all of the admin there's the marketing there's the social media there's the connecting there's the making sure that you've always got this pipeline there's the finances there's the administration there's the cash flow all of those things that need doing and not really realizing how much time it would take me to be chasing invoices and all those things and I think because of that and because I could pretty much pick and choose my hours actually if I didn't have a client today I could do what I wanted right I could either focus on plowing through working doing social media doing whatever it was that needed or I could maybe chill a bit um, and take some time off so I think just my patterns went, you know, completely out of sync. I didn't necessarily have to be at work at a certain time unless I was maybe going to a breakfast networking meeting. Then some days it was breakfast networking meeting and an evening networking meeting. So I was told that networking was the was the key in success uh, to, to building a business. I stopped having a lot of my time off, a lot of my holidays. I think, again, whilst I've been employed and my sons were, were still at school then as well. So, you know, coming back after... Um, after the kind of Christmas break, they had half term in February. They had half term in what April for for kind of April, April or May around Easter. They'd then have uh, May half term. Uh, we'd then go into the summer holidays. They'd have October half term, Christmas holiday, and either myself, my then husband, my son's dad, and all my parents were always working around that. So I would I would kind of work my my time around that. I always made sure that I had at least you know, kind of one one spa day, two spa days a year with with friends that were booked in. I'd have a bit of a girls trip, be it a long weekend or something once a year. But all of my time off really was booked as soon as that kind of annual holiday allowance was was refreshed. I would ensure that I was I was getting all of that time booked in a because of needing to work around school holidays being a working parent, being a working mum, needing to make sure that I could I could get some of that time off with, with my sons, but also making sure that we could book and pay for our family, family holidays with as, with as much notice as possible, right? Paying in either instalments or, or in, a, in a lump sum to, to get us those breaks. And so I stopped, I think I stopped having a lot of that because I didn't think that I necessarily needed the routine. I didn't think that I needed a, a lot of that time in my diary. And I think we've, we've talked about that for um, or with some of you before in, uh, in, in some of the episodes. But I also think what I had uh, kind of, I don't know, like a maybe a pinnacle thing, right? This kind of, uh, I don't know. It's kind of, I want to say caliber, right? But this, this, I had this idea that I wanted August off work, right? That was, that was a goal for me when I first started the business, right? If I could take all of August off, that for me would be a sign of success within my business. If I could afford to take August off, that would mean that financially the business was in a good place, from a time perspective, it would mean that everything was was working really well, that I had all the processes in place, uh, that I had the team in place, that I could I could make all of this stuff happen. And that really became a focus for me, right? I, I want to be able to take August off. I want to be able to take August off. And obviously, when we, we kind of got to got to 2020, there was uh, I, I did take the whole of August off and thought, you know, what will be will be there. And I did a lot of reflecting. My birthday is in September. And I think it was, it really was September 2020 that I decided that I didn't want to be doing the consultancy stuff that I was doing anymore. I wanted to go it alone, uh, leave my team, leave the company that I that I'd set up at the beginning of 2014. And, you know, really, really start to really start to make that change. But again, I still had, I'm, I want to be able to take August off. And that has really then been, uh, like I said, right? It's been a, it's been a goal, and in some ways, I think I've almost been 
uh, like forcing it right I've almost forced it and I've come I've come back into September this year so so many exciting things did a post about it this morning um I have got two days of the burnout academy this week so I'm I'm teaching another cohort of coaches this week in the burnout academy uh my very good friend Michelle Hartley has got her kind of HR geek meet on Friday I'm speaking there so I'm going for that I've got my stepson's birthday this weekend I've got my birthday next week uh, I've organized a couple of a couple of cinema trips for myself for next week on my own I, I love it my, my kind of safe space um I've got some facials booked in um I'm starting two different qualifications I'm starting um, a master's in the run-up to my PhD I'm doing a master's um in the psychology and neuroscience of mental health I am starting a um, somatic body work qualification understanding much more about kind of trauma and how we hold that in the body I'm joining a policy liaison group a government uh, policy liaison group liaising with government on what needs to change around workplace well-being um I have got uh, I've got lots and lots of events in the diary I've got talks in the diary I'm doing um I'm going into London on the 17th of September for a, a U Life webinar um, we're going to be recording live in the studio with a kind of live audience and then kind of online as well. Um, I have got lots and lots of um, webinar interviews and podcast interviews and uh, the HR Burnout Academy. Like there's so many amazing things that are going on. I, I love, love, love September. I think all of that excitement has kind of stayed with me throughout August. Right, I thought this is this is all the stuff that I'm going to do, and I wanted, didn't feel I needed to. And again, we I've talked about this difference before, haven't I? Right, so the difference between feeling like we want to do things and the difference between feeling like we need to do things. And I just right, all, like all I wanted to get stuff done. I wanted to get some things changed around the house. I wanted to be able to switch off last week uh, when we took my parents away. I wanted to get some things organized. I wanted to get on top of some of the social media. I wanted to be creating some new courses. I wanted to be creating some new content. I wanted to stay visible. And it wasn't a had to. It was a what, like I had like so much excitement and so much energy. And I thought, oh, just I just I just want to get that stuff done. And then there was the part of me that was like, but you like you need to be resting, right? I fell into that should trap, right? The should, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be shoulding, should we? Um, but you know, I, I kind of fell into that trap, like you you should be resting, so you need to stop. And this disconnect that I've had throughout August really got me kind of like, why? Why do I want August off? December feels a bit different. My, it's my son's birthday the week before week before Christmas. They um, it's their birthday the eighteenth of December. And when they were first born, I was uh, in retail, I was doing kind of H H R all the H R and kind of L and D stuff in retail. There were no holidays in December. Couldn't even swap a day off in order to have their birthday with them. But also like just being able to get ready throughout December, making sure we've got the presents wrapped, putting the tree up, doing all that stuff. So kind of September and into the first week of January, it still feels right in terms of taking that, that bulk period of time off. But I almost feel like I've outgrown the reason for wanting to take August, the whole of August. And so this disconnect that, that I've had throughout August has in some ways, in some ways, I've really enjoyed it because it has given me like I know like I've had no client work. And maybe that's the thing, right? Maybe it's no client work throughout August and I can do what I want with it. Um, we're already looking at what we're going to do for our family holidays next year. Um, so there's definitely that. But again, we know for at least two of the holidays that we're planning for next year, the kids don't want to come with us. I've taken my parents on one. But we know the kids don't want to come in. So actually, we don't have to be doing that throughout August. We don't have to be doing that throughout school holidays because we can work around it and do something differently if the kids don't want to come with us. And when I think back to 10 years ago when I started the business and taking August off 
felt like this kind of pinnacle moment, right? This utter moment of, of success. My kids were still at school. I was in the early stages of my business and for the type of work that I was doing at the time, a lot of clients, because a lot of their teams were having time off because I was still doing a lot of that corporate work. A lot of corporate clients didn't want to be engaging me or, or working with me throughout August anyway. So it was it was typically a quiet month. And 10 years on, I'm not working in that corporate space with those corporate clients that don't want to, you know, that, that don't do or don't want to engage me throughout August. I still work with corporate clients. I still do the talks. I still do workshops, but I'm not doing the same kind of project work that I was doing. My sons are no longer at school and therefore do not have a six week holiday every year. My youngest stepson, um, and he he lives with us kind of full time permanently anyway, but actually throughout the summer spends a bit, you know, spends more time with his mum, has family holidays with different members of the family, wants to be out with his friends more, stays with some of his friends um, does holidays with some of his friends. So he also doesn't need, definitely doesn't need me to be off with him for a month. And so I start, I sat thinking about all of these things. You know, if I had, maybe if my partner had taken the whole of, the, of, of August off again, that might be different. Maybe we could have done more stuff together. If we had planned a month away somewhere, maybe that would be slightly different. But I don't need I don't need a whole month off in August. I've done some great stuff. I've prepped some some incredible things. I've got some amazing stuff that you know I'm kind of ready to showcase, ready to get created, ready to get out there. But I didn't need August off. And actually I didn't really want August off. But I think because I'd convinced myself all that, like, this is all I've been saying for 10 years, right? August off means I'm successful. August off means this is okay. And I hadn't really stopped to think about what do I want to do with the time? How is it going to benefit me? How am I going to make the most of enjoying it? I had booked spa days. Um, I had a couple of new tattoos done. I booked spa days. I booked facials. I had walks. I was at the gym. I was doing lots of lovely yoga. I did lots and lots of lovely things. And it definitely gave me some of the thinking time. But at the same time, I was I, I almost felt like it was I was forcing myself to like enjoy the time off, knowing that I was coming back into a busy September. And it just doesn't feel aligned, it just doesn't feel aligned. And again, if I think back to kind of where I was when I first started the business, I Again, 10 years ago, right, like, you know, kind of fresh out of corporate, creating my own business. And actually what I thought success looked like at the time is very different to, to what I think success looks and feels like now. What I wanted my business to look like 10 years ago is very different to what I want my business to look like now. What I wanted my work and my team and my finances to look like 10 years ago is very different to what I want in my business now. And 10 years really is a really long time. Right? It's a really long time. If I were in-house, I think about, you know, the growth, the promotions, the salary increases, the changes in, in employers. If I think about all those things that I was doing whilst I was in-house and the pace that I was doing them, the speed in which I was doing them, um, you know, I've, I've again, I've shared before, I had an eight year period where I had seven promotions over eight years and added over a hundred thousand pounds to my salary during that, that eight year period. That was huge. And then I look back at it and think, well, it's probably no bloody wonder that you reached burnout then in, in terms of, of where you were, even though I know it was the toxic environment that I ended up in at director level that was the I suppose the kind of nail in the coffin into in terms of my, my in-house career right it, it made me think differently about what it was that I wanted to do when I started my consultancy in 2014 I I really did want to like you know build an empire 
I wanted a big team. I, you know, I wanted to like purpose build our own office space. I knew what I wanted it to look like. Uh, I knew how I wanted to decorate it. I knew what I wanted the feel to be like. You know, I knew our values and, and the behaviors. I knew how I wanted people to work. I knew the work that we would be doing. I, I just wanted to keep growing, right? I wanted to grow the biggest, the best and biggest team that I could doing really ethical consultancy, changing the world of work for the better, just doing lots and lots of amazing, right, really amazing, brilliant stuff. And then I didn't, right? Then I got to a point of, I just wanted to be me, right? Just want to be Kelly Swingler. I want to be talking and training and working in this burnout space, which I never thought I would be doing. Never in a million years did I think that I would be doing the work that I'm doing now, but I love it. And I want to do it in a way that is sustainable, sustainable for me, sustainable growth, sustainable for, for clients. I want to create these ripples of change. I love what I'm doing in the Burnout Academy. And I think because I am working in a different way and I have very different plans and I have a very different vision and I'm, you know, my, my very different mission in, in some ways, all of those things have allowed me to work in a way that no longer means that I need to take two months away from it every single year. I still want the downtime. My rest is still really important. When I've got busy months like I have this month, ensuring that I've got the downtime in between appointments, in between days, that I've got some early finishes, some later starts, making sure that I'm getting all of that in. And I have done. But I'm no longer in a, I'm no longer in a business where I feel like I need to take the whole of August off in order to survive a month, like to survive the rest of the year. My home life is very different in that I don't need to take a month off in order to be here for my kids. My home life and my relationship is very different that I, you know, I can work from anywhere. I could go away for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, six months, you know, whatever that would, that would kind of look like and work from where I want to, if I feel that I need to be working. But again, it feels like it's more, I've got more choice. And so I suppose my, I don't know, my invitation, my thoughts for you today is just like, what's no longer working for you? Maybe it's the job. Maybe it's the daily routine. Maybe it's your diet. Maybe it's your holiday pattern. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's your business working, whatever it is that it may be, but what's no longer working? And I wonder if there is like a telltale sign for that now is where you're doing stuff that is supposed to be making you feel better and you just see it like oh why am I doing this that's kind of how I felt at, at points throughout August I also felt very grateful that I was able to take the time off and create the thinking time and and you know have have lots and lots of wonderful things but for a lot of it it was like what just what am I doing like why why am I forcing myself to take this time off what am I doing and so what's not what's not working for you? What's no longer working for you? What do you need to change? Where are you almost kind of forcing yourself to stay in that frazzled mode instead of allowing yourself a bit more fabulousness, right? A bit more freedom, a bit more time, space, energy, whatever it is that you might need more of. But where can you create more of that, right? What needs to change for you to be less frazzled and a lot more fabulous what's no longer working for you that's my question for you today i'll be back with you next week again at seven we are seven i was like what time do we release them uh, every tuesday 7 a.m so i'm back with you then for now that has been this week's frazzled i hope that's been helpful i will see you again next time take care for now everybody bye bye bye